Hello, this is the first video in a series of videos about version 1.1 of the Alpha 360 commercial ERP. What you see now as version 1.1 was intended to be version 1.0, but since we are all programmers, we understand that things can happen. So, in this video, we are going to work in two scenarios. The first scenario is to set up the ERP. The second one is to talk or walk through translation, multi-currency and other international issues. The first thing to do is download version 1.1 from our website. Go to Downloads and at the top of Downloads there is Download the Alpha 360 ERP commercial version. As soon as you click download, you will be asked for your user code and then you can download it. Just note that you will have to first sign in the website. After you have downloaded version 1.1, open your WinDev21 ID, go to Tools, Restore a Project, and restore. just make sure that you restored it in an area where you have full rights. This is important, especially for the web dev implementation. Now, after restoring the project, I'm going to open it from, in, from the WinDev21 environment. Since I've already opened it behind the scenes, I'm going to use recent projects. Now, what I'm going to do right now is going to run the Alpha 360 ERP from inside the environment. Just give me a minute to clear everything on my desktop. Seems like everything is okay right now. So, just let's talk a little bit about the databases. The Alpha 360 ERP as seen in version 1.1 supports a classic HFSUL database and a client-server HFSUL. In the tab Classic Connection, we tell him where to find the data for the classic HFSUL demo. If we want to use a client-server connection, we have to tell him the server address. This is the server address. This is the port we open. This is the name, the database name of the server. This is the user on the server and this is the password on the server. We are going to work now in the classic demo since it's easier and everything is the same. So let's log in. This is the first time. We're not going to talk now about the language. We're going to leave it a little. Let's go in and do a login. Now the first time we enter the ERP, all data files are created. Let's go down here to the administration area, to the company area, to create example data, and let's create some example data. Okay, just take a moment and log out of the ERP. And then let us go in again. Now, the first thing <coughs> sorry, about international issues is the language. These languages are supported in the ERP and we, uh, you will understand in a minute what supported means. There are two types of languages in the Alpha 360 ERP. There are languages there are internal, these are the English and the French language, and they are languages that are external. Let's select the English language, let's get login, and let's go to the area down here, to the system area, the languages. Okay, here is a list of all the languages that we have right now in the ERP. This is a classic Alpha 360 Bros ERP Windows. 
from version 1.1 in the WinDev and the WebDev implementation, we have an actual combo box over here. So, th this, these are the languages that are supported right now in version 1.1. Let's take a, a, a closer look. Let's say, take a look at the English language. The English language is an internal language. This means that all translation features of the Alpha 360 ERP will not work. What they don't care about the language. That is because, let's go into the code and let's go inside a window. Let's go inside a field, the search field. You will see that search has a caption. It will always use for English the caption search because it is an internal window. Uh, sorry, it is an internal language. Let's take a look at the French language. The French language is also internal to the project. But what we have told the ERP is that in this implementation we are not going to treat it as an internal language. That means that it will use the dictionary and the translations that we give to the ERP. Where are these translations done? First of all, we go to the area jobs translation. Here, we don't have anything right now. But we have included a list of all references inside the ERP up to version 1.1. Probably some of them are missing, but we are going to add it on the way. And what we do, let's say that we want to translate, to make a translation for Greek. We go down here, we say we want to translate to Greek. We go to Actions, we go to Import, we select the file. This file is included in the download section of your version 1.1. We do an open. We do an import. Okay. And what I have done is that I have created entries for the Greek language with all the references that are in the ERP. And what I do right now is I go here and just translate. Let's go and see here. This is another product. And I write the Greek text. This means that everywhere in the ERP where you where the ERP sees add product and it is working in Greek and it shows us here where it is working, it will translate it to this thing here. It works quite differently than the translation features inside the WinDev IDs. Because the WinDev IDs work on a field by field basis. We work on a sorry, we work on a dictionary. Now how can you add your own translations in the dictionary? First of all, you can go into the languages area translations and you could do it manually. You can select the language, you can add the reference and then you can give it translation. The other way is to walk through, walk through sorry, the ERP and let it do it automatically. Let's say we go to the fleet area. Let's go to open the list and at every screen in the ERP we can hit Alt, Control, T. And the ERP will automatically create translation entries for this screen. What does it actually do? Let's see the translation. Because we told it to translate to Greek and we have enabled developer mode, 
what it actually does is it runs through all the prompts or fields or tables or captions and things like that and it makes a reference inside the translation if it doesn't exist if it exists it just ignores it in what language does the reference does the entry being done in the language translate to now we can take this translation export it to an Excel give it to as many users as we like let them translate do the translation in the Excel and then what we can do is go and re-import the Excel file so at least for external languages everything is very very easy now when your language should be internal well if it is your primary language I think it should be internal for our Greek implementations all our implementation have the Greek language as internal but it really depends on your resources now let's go to the second part of the video and talk about formatting and multi-currency and other special international issues let me close a few of these windows here let's go to administration area to the company area okay and the first thing that is important here is the currency this is our local currency everything is getting at the end translated to this currency now let's go to the configuration let's go to the area of inventory accounting data formatting and rounding now just give me a minute to go to the Alpha 360 ERP inside WinDev 21 and let's take a look oh sorry I lost it here but I'll go I'll get it after when I get in again let's go to the project to the project description let's go to the languages and just take a look here at the two internal languages this is the English internal language and this is the French internal language what they have is they have various settings like using this kind of decimal operators parameters separators the currency the time the date the duration and various things these are not used in the ERP why let's go and run it and see let's go to the administration area to the company to the configuration and let's talk a little about languages somebody we can have on the same ERP two users working on different languages that means that the languages do not say anything about the formatic and the rounding of data in the ERP they are absolutely independent we have for every company in the ERP its own formatting independently of the, co of the PC and the local things he has on his PC so we can select the data formatting here we can select the numbering system the Indian is a little bit uh, more tricky so but you can uh, look at it at Wikipedia and see how different is it is in the international numbering system the number of decimal points the number of prices the decimal quantities etc the currency sign this is the currency for our default currency the euro that we had if we want we we cannot you we may use it as a blank now let's take a look at the installation because we may have many installations that we are going 
that we can replicate between them, we can give them installation IDs. More on this in a later video. The same about the, tra the CS transaction mode and this, just to make sure everybody understands it, does not work on classic HFSQL databases, it works on only on client-server databases. So, the thing to remember here is that data formatting, date formatting, number formatting, etc. is per implementation. It is not affected by the language the user is selecting to work on and it does not depend on the PC the computer is the user is working on. Now let's go on and see the multi-currency features of the ERP. Let's go to the ERP. Let's go to the to the sales area and let us create a new customer. Okay. Let's name customer and let's select a different currency. Let's select the GPP. Okay. Let's give him some connections to some parameters. Okay. And just let's take a look at what does this mean for Steven Sitas that he has the currency GPP? This means that all our transactions inside the ERP will be done with this currency. Sales, sales transactions, payments, ETC will always be done with GBP. And at the time of the transaction, this currency with an exchange currency will be translated to our local currency. This means that at the same time, we always have information about this party, Stephen Sitas, for his local currency, his local currency, GPP, and our local currency. What users usually ask is, let's say that I had Steven Sitas with two currencies. Not only GPP, but something else also. First of all, this is not good accounting practices. We never, never have this kind of things. But as you know, users always ask the most uh, peculiar things. What you can do is you can make another record for this for this customer Steven Sitas number two or something like that and you can add him another uh, currency but you will have to always check on two accounts to see his balance okay now let's go on and see the uh, the multi-currency accounting fe features of the accounting model now, let's take a moment and talk about what is accounting. For us, for the Alpha 360 ERP, accounting is the general ledger module. It is not the general accounting inside the Alpha 360 ERP, because in an ERP, uh, everything could be accounting. A sales could be accounting, and voice could be accounting. What we mean with the terminology accounting is the general accounting inside the Alpha 360 ERP. Now, everything in accounting starts with the GL accounts. Now, we have already added an account 1011 and this account is in is a Euro account. It's a bank account in Euro. And we can have another account 1012 bank account could be in GPB and we have can have as many bank accounts in as many different uh, currencies as we like. This is where we add them. Now let's go and do a transaction. This is the tricky thing. It is tricky but at the same time it is very simple. Let's go 
to the GL batches. Let's add a batch. This is, I have only one journal, the date, let's say a test here. Okay, this is approved. Now, what is draft? If I click draft here, when I add it right now, and before it is posted, it will never get any journal ID. If I have it non-draft, it will get a journal ID even if it is not posted. So it depends on your, your installation, your country ETC. Now, let's go and do a transaction. Select a bank account from Euro. Okay. Let's say a debit account 100. Let's make everybody happy in, G in Britain and select this one and let's give it a 2, a credit. Okay, let's take a closer look here. What does it say? Let's take a look at this area here, debits and credits. These are our local currency. What does this mean? This means that we are debiting this account with 100 euro and credited it with 100 euro. These ones, the sums down here, must be balanced. If they are not balanced, they cannot be posted. But let's take a look at the currencies. This bank account here is a euro currency. It has an exchange, of course, because it is with this is itself one. It's doing a debit of 100. What 100 euro? This one here is doing a credit of 50 with which currency with GPB and it translates because we have an exchange currency to two and everything is okay here now we can add it it doesn't it's not important that the currency sums here and here do not balance what must balance are these let's do an add okay and let's and everything is fine. We can now post it ETC. Now, which accounts can be multi-currency? First of all, sales cannot be multi-currency. This means that even if we do a sales for GPB, everything in the general ledger is going to be translated in our local currency. This is very important. Where can we get the information for the actual sales? We can get it from the sales area, but the general ledger has only the general ledger liability account like sales has only local currency entries. What can be in non-local currency entries is this kind of accounts, bank accounts, assets. Nothing else. This is very important because a lot of people have a difficulty when talking about multi-currency and, and talking about what happens to sales, what happens to money, what happens in DC. Okay? Now subscribers who have already restored the web dev project will now know about the basic working of the web dev implementation. In a, couple, in a, in a week or so we will be releasing version 1.11. You can find more information on our roadmap here on our website. Now what is a few things about version 1.11? First of all it will have a floating menu. What is a floating menu? Let's go and do a connect. Well you see there is no menu before the messages area. Here is the menu. Now this can be used when a user has small a small desktop or for any other reason now for users who have not seen it let's go to this area here go to accounting
go to GL batches. Okay. And now actions just like the WinDev implementation has been also implemented in WebDev. Now, let's see what is going to come with version 1.11. First of all, 1.11 is a version that is primarily for web dev. This means, if we go here to the roadmap, everything that is not in the web dev implementation will be now in the web dev implementation. Meaning that you can, a user can use the web dev implementation just like he uses the win dev implementation this one here and this one here and of course we will have pop-up pages for customers and suppliers etc just like we have for GL accounting etc now what is next in this video series the next video video will be about how to extend the Alpha 360 ERP. For this reason, we have added inside the Alpha 360 data model a basic, very primitive, primitive, sorry, module for assets. We are going to use this module for assets, so we can, on a YouTube video, implement basic asset, fixed asset functionality. The complete fixed asset functionality will of course be available to all users at some time before version 2 for the Alpha 360 ERPs. Thank you everybody for watching.